This is Todd Coburn of Cal Poly Pomona with Aero 3261 Lecture 24 on Castigliano's Theorem. Recall back as we've been going through the course, after each topic we have learned about strain energy. We learned about the strain energy for an axial force. We learned about the strain energy for torsion and bending, for direct shear and for transverse shear. The basic idea is rooted in the energy, since work is just force times deflection, we find that the strain energy is related to the stress and the strain in the part, and we use that to develop these simplified equations. What Castigliano's theorem says, it goes a bit further, and it says if the work is just force times deflection and the increment of work is just the increment of force and the corresponding increment of deflection we can simply rearrange that equation by saying the deflection at any point is the change in work in a structure with respect to the change in force that's applied. This can be written in a translational sense as shown here or can be written for a rotational deflection, where the rotation is just the change in work with respect to the moment. Basic assumptions are the conservation of energy. Material must behave in a linear elastic manner. Remember, that's how we derived all of our energy derivations were with that assumption. It applies only to bodies with a constant temperature, because the change in temperature changes the dimensions of the part, and only to conservative forces, which means forces with no losses. This actually looks rather obvious, but it turned out to be kind of a revolutionary idea, and has simplified a number of analyses. A lot of finite elements will use this concept for derivation of different things. The beauty of Castigliano's theorem is that it basically says we can evaluate the structure, the structural deflections based on the change in energy. Now what that implies is in order to calculate the deflection we're going to need a force. Since we're looking at the change in energy per unit force, what that means is we have to have a force applied to the structure, look at the change in energy in that structure, and then evaluate the change in energy per unit force to get that deflection. However, the same principle can be applied when there's no force. If we simply apply a force, look at how the energy changes, but we can use this if there is no force, by simply applying a fictitious force, evaluating the change in energy with respect to that force, and then checking the change in energy per unit force for the deflection. We then can plug in the value of whatever the force is, and if it happens to be zero, then that will eliminate some terms and we can still use this to solve the structure. It's called a virtual force. When we apply a force, it's not really there to go and trick the, st the structure into revealing its answers, its secrets. So we're recalling that the strain and energy has an integral. It's an integration of the stress. We find that that can introduce complications, that integral can introduce complications into the analysis. There are some equations that are not uh, very easy to integrate and others that we can't integrate at all con with a continuous function. At the same time, we're also going to take a partial derivative and the partial derivative has the beauty of eliminating anything that doesn't have that variable that we're, that we're, that we're differentiating with respect to. And the neat little trick is we can actually take the partial derivative first, which eliminates a bunch of terms that may be the complicating terms. If we just do our integration and differentiation in a better manner, meaning we differentiate first and then integrate, that often will simplify our result. So we can take what we know about the energy, apply Castigliano serum to it, and we get these equations for the translational rotational deflections. The first equation is for axial load, the next one for torsion, the next one for bending. If we have a truss and apply this, what we're looking for is a translation. 
This is using Hibbler's picture and Himmler's nomenclature. He uses N for the force in the rods. With that said, most of the other nomenclature looks the same. The strain energy in any member for an axial member is just the force squared L over 2EA. The deflection is just given by this. According to Castigliano's theorem, this is just a differentiation and an integration, and we're just doing it in, in a discrete manner. Since we're going to do the differentiation first, what we can look at and say, well, the change in this strain with respect to N, the only thing in there is the N. Therefore, we can just take the derivative, the partial of that N squared term, and then do the summation. You'll notice the easiest way to do this, since these are all constant force members, is just tab, uh, tabular method that we will look at in an example in a bit. Our procedure then will be to place a force on the truss at the joint where the displacement is wanted. So let's say we want the displacement, the vertical displacement at point B. This particular structure has a force at, at that point. Therefore, we can use that force at that point in order to solve the problem for the deflection. If we had instead wanted the deflection in the x direction, we would have had to apply a virtual force or an imaginary force at point B in the x direction. Since there's already a force in the vertical direction, we want the, def the deflection in the vertical direction. We don't have to add anything. However, you can't you need to resist the urge to go and plug in this 100 kilonewton force, solve for all the forces and leave them as numbers because you're going to need to be able to see all of the influences of that 100 kilonewton force. So you're going to need to place a P on the structure at the point and in the direction where you want the deflection and then solve for all the forces with respect to that force, leaving that force as a variable, apply Castigliano's theorem and only after you've done that can you go and plug in the value of the force. This is our first step of the procedure that we just described. We then calculate our forces in each member. Then we calculate we, the change in force with respect to force. We insert whatever the force is and that solves the problem. We'll see an example covering this in a minute. This is a little example. It looks like the exact same problem as the last one. However, what we're looking for here is the deflection, the vertical deflection at point C. Now, if we had wanted the deflection at point B, that's pretty straightforward. We just label that force as P and solve. Since we want the displacement at a different place, we need to have a force at the place in the direction. And so we apply a force P at that point. Now, P at point C is the force that we need to be able to identify. We don't want to combine the 100 kilonewton and bury that in the value of that. So we need to be able to keep track of the force in each member, but really we need to understand how much force is in each member due to P and how much is in there due to other things. For this reason, we can apply numeric numbers to all of our forces and moments, except for the one that we're trying to evaluate the deflection for. In that case, in this case, that's force P at joint C. Now that we have our free body diagram of the structure, we can solve for the reactions. Notice the reactions are written as a function of both P and everything else. We then can use the method of sections or joints to solve the truss for the truss internal forces. This particular example uses the method of joints. We then can tabulate our results where we have each member listed. We have the axial force in each member. We then take that axial force, that end column, and take the partial of each with respect to P. You'll notice in AB there's no P, therefore the partial of the force in AB is with respect to P is just zero. Same thing for BC. But both AC and CD have the force P in that in those members and therefore when we take the partial we get the two partials shown in this table. Once we have evaluated we have the force in each member N and the change in force with respect to P we then can evaluate what the actual force is in each member by just plugging in our value of P which happens to be zero since it was a virtual force. We end up with that 
fourth column. The length of the member, it's also convenient. I like to put the E and the A in this table as well in case those change between the members. We then can apply Castigliano's theorem. They're doing a partial application of Castigliano's theorem in the last column of this table where they have N multiplied by DN DP multiplied by L. You then sum all those up and then since this didn't have E or A, we'll then apply the last pieces or the length in order to calculate what the deflection is. See how easy that is? If we have a beam, we can apply it here. Let's say we want the strain energy for that. That's the strain energy for a beam. And we calculate our deflections by applying Castigliano's theorem. Once again, we're going to take this partial with respect to P and we're going to stuff it inside the equation. Now, in this particular case, what this works for is if we want a vertical deflection, what we're going to need to take is the partial with respect to P. We're going to need to apply a force in the direction we want, in the place we want, solve for all the forces and moments in the structure, and then apply Castigliano's theorem, and then insert what the actual force is. If we wanted the rotation, we then would be applying a moment at the place in order to get that rotation and do the same thing. Here's a little beam example. So let's say we want the displacement of point B. If we want a vertical displacement at point B, what do we need to apply? That's right, a vertical force. If we wanted the angle of twist at point B, we would apply a moment. Got it? So we apply our vertical force. We solve for the internal loads and moments. This is the equation for the moment written from statics. We then take the partial of that with respect to that force P, and we then can apply Castigliano's theorem like this. Here's another little truss example. What we have here are two members in two wires. We know what the areas are, we know what the lengths are, and we know what the force is. Looks like we want the vertical displacement at point C. Looks like we already have a force there. So we can just take that force, that virtual force, and use that to solve for Castigliano's theorem. We're trying to find the deflection at point C. We're going to do a free body diagram. Looks like this. We then solve for our reactions like that, summing our moments. Summing our forces, right? You shouldn't have got out of statics without being able to do this. Now to get the loads in each member, we can use the method of joints, drawing a free body diagram at each joint and summing our forces at each joint in each direction until all of the forces in the members are ours. Now once we have all the forces, we are ready to construct our table. We're going to list each member in our leftmost column. We're going to put the force in each member. Remember, we left the force P as a variable, so now we know exactly what the force in each, in each member is. Look how easy it is to take the partial of N. The partial of N with respect to P is just 2.5 and so on. Simple. I like to put, like I said, the length, area, and E in the same table in case those values change. And then when you apply Castigliano's theorem, as we see to the rightmost column, we just have this column N times the DNDP times the L divided by AE. And when you have that N, you're going to actually, now that you've already evaluated DNDP, you can go ahead and plug in the value of P. If P has a force value, you can plug that in. If it was zero, then that would just be inserting zero. And now we see the uh, result here, 43.3 times 10 to the minus sixth. What I'm listing in the column on the right is times 10 to the sixth of 
or one million times that value just to make it easier to read. Got that? So whatever the P is times this value gives you the deflection. That's all we have. Enjoy.